This conference will now be recorded. Budget workshop, August 7, 2023, at 4.05 p.m. Uh, do we have our live audio feed working? I know Jeff was trying to uh, communicate. Um, which one, Sam? Yeah, he is to turn his mic on. Is it two way? It will be if I know who he is. <laughs> that one allow him to be. Hey, Jeff, if you can hear that, if you can text me on what your phone number is that they can plug you in. Let's take care of this first. Yep. You just heard somebody. Yes. 346-6887. Three, three, six, six, eight, eight, I don't have the phone number, just says caller. Oh. Oh, that was Victor. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't you? <laughs> Can't you hit that button and talk to the caller? Can you text? Or can you pass to where they can text? Have it have him text and then it'll show up which caller he is. I just know that one on there, but I don't know if it's him. Are you on the call? Is it what's in the budget? She has been dressed up for it yet. It has to be him. We had the more others earlier. All right. All right. We'll continue until he services. Jeff was planning on uh, zooming and he thought there was a back and forth feed. Well, there is. We just have to figure out which one is him. See? I have no clue. Because there's unidentified callers. Right, I think we just I have his know. phone number. Oh, we've all I got his, his number, number but it just comes in as caller one. Uh, I have his number. Four, one. If you see, five. I only identified that it's caller four or caller five. I don't know which one's which. So if he can text in the system. And tell us what. It, 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 if he texts, then once he texts and hit enter, it'll tell us which caller is texting. Send a text within the system, and then you will be plugged in both ways. All right, let's continue. Um, let's do the roll call. Kelly? Commissioner Fleal? Present. Commissioner Bessler? Here. Commissioner Cassidy? Here. Vice Mayor Cuz? Here. And Jeff B? Is see? with notice. <laughs> Absent, but on the phone. Okay, can we say the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic, republic for which it stands, one nation. nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, any additions, deletions, modification, approval That's of the agenda? agenda? Make an approval motion. I move we approve the agenda. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Okay, uh, public comment. Uh, the public... Uh, are we going to allow public comment on individual items? I think yeah. it's so small public, yeah. Okay, open the floor. We're done with that. General public comment period is now closed. All right, presentation of the proposed FY24 budget by town manager Lett. All right. Um, as we went over um, in July, uh, there's been a couple of changes you will see in the revenues and expenditures. Um, one, sorry, a couple of changes in the revenues and expenditures. You should have had a handout today um, that highlights some of those. I uh, put it on your statement. Um, under intergovernmental appropriations, we have a section for state appropriation funds. Um, that is what we are hoping will be additional revenue. We are applying to the state for a grant to receive between 40 and 50% of the funds that we spent on the priest property to be returned to us as a reimbursement um, under their conservation program. And you think that'll occur in FY24? Uh, the grant, the grant uh, applications are due end of November, December, so they would make the decision in the spring of 
24, and then decisions most likely they would pay them out in 24. So you're not, the way you've structured the budget isn't based upon this money being available to us? No. Okay. Wait a well, second, what is, do you mean? But it is a revenue item. It, it's a revenue item, but it is 750,000. We are looking to still have in excess of 484,000 in intergovernmental revenues. Um, and that is with us not having finalized what we are and are not doing in capital plans. There's a lot of things in the capital project plans. Maybe, maybe I misunderstood to the question being asked. When you say we have 488 left over, that's excluding any grant money. But that's, ex that's including that grant money. That we but, don't have. Um, it also includes a transfer of $1.6 million to capital projects. If we reduce the capital projects, um, and capital projects and personnel are the two major things that we did not get a good time to discuss at the last meeting, then we'll have a better idea of whether we have to use any of our fund balance if we don't get that 750000 or if we want to reduce out of that $1.6 and still have that 750000 left. So, uh, help me here, you're a uh, CPA, Phil. We should exclude grant money and if it does happen, we should do a budget that's clean without using any grant money. If we do get grant money, we can then use that towards reserve. But does the grant money have to be used specifically? It has to be used specifically but, for... But we already spent the money on the priests. But this is, it's structured such that we can be reimbursed. And it, it had to have happened after January 1st, yeah. 22, and we purchased it in April of 22. So it's totally eligible under this state program. Um, but you understand like, what I'm saying. Well, yeah. you're just saying, do, do you want to guess that you're going to get it in time for the yeah. budget, then you can put it in. If you're not going to get it, then you shouldn't put it in. It shouldn't go in. It should not. It should not. No. It's like spending a bonus. But then, you don't and, and if it does come in, we'll worry about what category to put it in then. We'll be fine. Right. Because it's a reimbursement for something right. we spent. We'll okay. Fine. I have one question though. Did you send out the new schedule that says we only have 400 grand because the last schedule I have is a million? Yeah, so. I sent it out this morning to you, Phil. So. Okay. Right. <laughs> I was on a plane, sorry. I apologize. But again, um, the biggest portion um, that we need to determine is there are a lot of capital projects that are either that are all considered to be approved until this evening we decide whether we're going to or not. The $40,000 on the drain field we said was up in the air. Um, no, we, we actually, when we talked about that at the last meeting. We, we, we said we wanted to look at alternatives and we have not been able to get pricing alternatives to, to just do repairs, not replacements. We said evaluate drain field and repair or replace if necessary, and we assigned it high priority. Right, but it is that forty thousand. We don't know what that cost is going to be. If we're going to just repair, it's going to be less. So, with that being our intent, we can reduce that. There is also projects on there, including the Hudson Avenue seawall. That's a fifty-fifty grant. Uh, the inlet case, the wall maintenance. Can, um, can we can we stop at each item? The the Hudson Street seawall, okay? We know de facto, and and uh, what do you call it? Public Works has watched this. You probably watched this, and I've certainly sat there and watched it. Putting the seawall at the end of Hudson before the DOT fixes their retention pond won't do Hudson any good whatsoever. Well, Lisa instead was instead of in flooding meeting. over the seawall, it's just going to come around back through the mangroves. But DOT has the permit to fix their drains and ponds. Right. Be why we would put that in the 24 budget. Their intention is to begin work on it as soon as the contractor. So they're going to start work on it during FY24, you think? Yeah, they want to finish working on it, start working on it, hopefully still during FY23. So we we had a meeting with um, a Zoom meeting, Lisa Trapepi, Tara, yeah. um, Ryan, um, our grant writer, myself and Lynn, and 
um, the seawall project is one that Lisa's actually working on right now. The deadline for submitting for a grant for that is September 1st. So it would be, it was about the 50-50, right? Was that through Resilient Florida? Yeah, 50-50, uh, yes. Lindsay. So, yeah. okay, so we're making a, a commission decision here to fund the Hudson Seawall in FY24. Contingent with, with upon the, receiving the grant. Contingent on the grant, okay. Yes. Yep. All right. Same with doing work on inlet K's, but more importantly, um, in but capital. We, we should do this in order if right. we're hopping around. But do we want to start with capital or do we want to start with personnel? Because you were talking about picnics over personnel. I provided you. What is easiest for you? Probably capital because the personnel discussion I think is going to be the longest. Okay. Okay. So we've decided on the replaced drain field that we're holding off totally or holding off for more information. No, we're going to seek more information. Do we want to leave that at 40,000? with the idea that our t intent is to do uh, repair more than replace, which means that we could reduce that 40,000 because the 40,000 was the cost to replace. And what does Lisa say about this? Lisa says 40,000 would be the cost to replace, but we again, we have not been able to get somebody to come out and do an investigation and see if we can figure out what's going on with the drain field in the last month and give us an idea. So let, let's say we cost. put that down to a repair cost of 20 and then you have contingency money. So Correct. if in fact we get the bad news, you can pull for contingency to cover the other 20. Correct. Does that sound fair to commissioners? Yep. Okay. That's number one. And Ken didn't even complain. Jesus. Okay, Town Hall AC, I assume that's going through. Town Hall AC is going through. Yep. Ultraviolet air handlers. Um, I wasn't necessarily a fan, but uh, staff seems to be, so. No commissioner problems there. Just seems expensive to me. I don't know. But it, I don't it is expensive. It's, it's in lieu of changing the paper filters. No, no it, it is because we're in a building that the windows don't open and have very little uh, circulation issues. And with being on, you know, a salt air issue, we have mold and mildew and different things like that that go through the ventilation system because we now have a 15 year old ventilation system. The idea is the ultraviolet air handlers put on the current. HVAC system it's, will reduce uh, issues with our. I had one installed cool upstairs for somebody who had allergies. It's real simple. They install it on the en entrance to the air system. And the only thing you're going to have to do is in the running budget, you've got to replace the bulb every two years. And it's it's expensive. It works, by the way. Yeah, but it's only who, who recommended like this? Yeah, yeah it's expensive bulb. <laughs> Who's, where, did, where did the idea come from? The idea came from uh, Billy and our HVAC team, as well as the staff complaining about constantly having runny noses and the sniffles, allergies, things like that here in the building. So we, who knows if it's going to correct that? But it, 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 it's a good thing to have in today's environment. Most commercial buildings are going like this. It's very common. So we agree. We're also we're. Uh, Approving that. Agreed? Okay, next up. Wet well maintenance pump station 15 high priority. I think we already discussed this and we just have to do it, right? Any commissioner comments? Drainage storm uh, number five. Drainage storm water and other infrastructure $95,000 high priority. I believe we discussed this ad nauseum. Yep. There's no way around it. Uh, and in fact, it's just a grouting that stunned me, but Billy described why that's so expensive. Correct. Okay. But would, would any of these be candidates for grants as well? I mean, are we? They are may we... be, but again, as the vice mayor was saying, you're better to budget without grants than okay. and use that as, you know, because regardless of whether we have the grant, it has to be done. So. Right. Yeah. And so, Lynn, if somebody, either you or Kelly, or we'll have to take a break, do a running total of what we spent to the 488. Doing it right You're now. Doing it. Excellent. 
All right, number six, pump repair and replacement, tropical and wool bright pump stations. Uh, is no way around this. Is that accurate? Uh, according to Billy, no, there's no way around this. Any commissioner have any comments on this? Okay, we already discussed, so we've approved that. The number seven, Hudson Ave Seawall, um, that's dependent upon the grant. Right, we, yeah. we would so, be funding this contingent upon receiving the grant to do the project. So how do you put that in the final budget? You, we put it in at 750,000. I have 375,000 in grant funds under capital, but this project would not start or go out to bid unless the grant was received. Okay, so if, if we, again, I'm not an accountant, maybe, maybe Phil has a thought here. If we're taking 375,000, we had 488. We've already, with the 375, we've blown through the 488 that we had to spend. Right? What's the 488? The that's the ARPA? That, that's what we have before we add these things, the money in the budget, 488,000. No, no, 488 was after we spent all of this. After the capital? After the capital. Okay, my misunderstanding. Yeah. Yeah, so having, if we spend all of this, we will only have 488,000 if we get that 750,000 reimbursement. If we cut some of these, which we've already cut one, there's a couple others that I think need to be up for discussion, whether they're considered funded or not. Um, again, those would be uh, contingent upon receiving grant funds, that type of thing, or if the actual specific project comes up as necessary. Um, number 18 is one of those. Yeah, but let's not jump. We'll stay on our path here. Right. Okay, so we're actually going to put $750,000 in capital because capital in, in is separate than general funds. Right. Okay. Any comments on that? So yeah, can you the four hundred and eighty four thousand is what that's what we have revenue over expenses with all of these things being paid. Correct. Or budgeted. Correct. Okay. And the seven hundred fifty thousand dollar grant for the property purchase is not part of that. It is part of that. In um, addition to the 480. The 480 is, if we did not have the 750,000, we would be running a roughly $325,000 deficit into our fund reserves, funding every single one of these capital projects at this rate. Okay. Because we're transferring 1.6 million from the general fund to the capital fund to do all of these projects. So, okay. Did I hear that correctly? If we don't get the 750, we're running a 325 deficit. Only if we do <clears throat> all 5, 5, 500, or dollars worth of capital projects. What was the deficit? 320. 320. Okay, let's keep going. Okay. Of that 320, we've already saved 20. Yes, we know that. All right. Um, newly, uh, number eight, fully equipped fleet vehicles. I guess this is the police chief. We already discussed this, did we not? Yes, 55,000 is our ongoing payment plan. 100,000 uh, rotates out to the existing police cars. Agreed, chief? Agreed. Anybody have any issues here? Uh, Lynn, does this include the, your desire to have a car, is that in this item? Not under the capital because that item was already paid. We'll discuss that under the manager's budget and we'll First, get to okay. that. Well, street name sign replacement program. This is a ongoing capital savings plan to replace our street signs. How much Wait, what, num what number are you on now? Uh, nine. Number nine. nine. Oh, right. Did we, um, how much did we spend last year? Last year? Uh, I don't remember how much we spent last year, but uh, every year we put aside $7,000 towards street sign replacement. You've been in this business a long time. Necessary? To the street signs? Yeah, because yeah, it's a symbol of your town. They look bad. It's like painting the fire hydrants. Yeah. Good point. We don't do that either. <laughs> <laughs> 
Number t- all right, so we're okay on seven thousand for street replacements. Uh, number ten, inlet K seawall maintenance. Yeah. Um, I- this is something that is an ongoing maintenance. We put aside for it every year. This year we do need to do some work on it, um, but it's something that's been in the capital plan routinely for the last five years to set money aside for any ongoing maintenance of our inlet cave. Seawall. Is this the part that's just north of the bridge? That yes. That's town, so it's just that piece? Yes. Because you say um, both sides of the inlet cave seawall. Well, that's when the sea cap was constructed along both sides. Meaning the south side and the north? Or? Yes. So just the north side. In other words, where it but intersects. Right now, we would only be doing maintenance on a small section that is in need of repair. Okay. Uh, if you so choose, you could clean that up for the final year. Okay. We'll write pump station generator. Uh, there, there's no way around it, right? There really isn't. Um, the generator that's there right now, um, if I remember correctly, we have to have a portable generator there. Um, yeah, if the generator goes out, the entire south side of town has a problem. That's correct. the problem. It's um, not just that little area. How old is the generator? Like I said, the generator that's there, I believe, is a portable generator right now because it the, the original generator stopped working so we would re, be replacing that generator with a permanent placement generator the same size as we replaced the town hall generator for the same price um, but stationary rather than a mobile generator so that we move in at the beginning of did we purchase season. that or are we we it's one of our many um but by having a permanent generator there that allows us another generator to move around during major rainy uh, events or hurricanes to prevent other stormwater drainage issues. So right now, let's say 20 minutes from now, we get an unexpected hurricane. We get tremendous blight. Are you telling me that we have to move a portable generator down to the Wilbright station? No, it's no there right now, now it just sits there. The, sta- the portable the, the, the is portable acting as a stationary. Okay. But if you have to have another generator, yeah. you don't have it. Because I haven't heard the generator, um, you know, it kicks on once in a while. I haven't heard it kick on in a very long time. Okay, so we, ha- we have to do that. Um, so do we know when this generator will arrive? Um, if it's similar to, well, number one, uh, unless you authorize us to order it before the fiscal year starts, um, the last one, I believe, which was the town hall generator, took six to ten weeks to arrive, as opposed to the one that's going at Tropical that had a 52-week lead time. So my question is, is there, there's no way we can order this and have it before the height of hurricane season. That's what I seem to be hearing. We could if we wanted to put it in the FY23 budget instead of the FY24 budget. And do we have room in the FY23 for it? Currently, I would say no, not without eating into cash reserves, because we've pretty much eaten up all of our contingencies, and it would be more than we would have budgeted for contingency anyhow. So there's pieces of paper that say it can be done, and then there's reality. Correct. So It would require budget amendments. No, but I mean, the reality of actually, let's say right now we go, yes, let's order it today. Then we would have to add it to tonight's meeting agenda. For... Yeah. But in reality, I wish somebody from Public Works was here. In reality, is there any chance it could be installed before October? I, I can't imagine, right? Okay. So we'll get back to that after we have that answer. I, I just can't imagine that we could get it installed in time, which means we're using a portable in place of a stationary which means if we have problems elsewhere in town, we're just out of luck. Correct. Wow. Okay, uh, let's move on to number 12 while we wait for the answer on number 11. Number 12, paint town hall interior and replace flooring and commission chambers, room $45,000, high priority. I want to break this out into different votes um, on each item rather than lumping it all together. Um, is there any commissioner comments on 
painting the interior of town hall. I, I, I don't have a problem with how things look. Yeah, I, I don't see any marks on the wall or anything. Are we changing the colors? Not changing the colors. There's not, well, there's, and you've got marks on the wall over here. Um, are they know. scrubby marks or are they gouges? You know what I mean? Yeah, can you see if you can fix that over there? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So there's probably you tried the mid traffic not to erase it. Always. Warrant painting, is that what you're saying? And not just to nix it, but there are probably high traffic areas that warrant repainting. The conference yes. room was the, yeah, the conference was just room is in unfortunate color. Yeah. yeah, but we're not just because you don't like the no, no, color, no, but there are marks all over it. No, there are marks all over okay, it. Okay, so I'm why right. don't you come back at the next budget meeting and tell us there isn't a next budget meeting. We'll okay, well, what do you think are the high traffic areas that are damaged enough to require painting between you and Kelly? Can you tell us? Conference room, lobby, commission chambers. Well, commission chambers, we just said are fine. Yeah, all the hallways. All hallways? Yeah, so. Hallways are generally in need of more than, more often. Yeah. Okay, so lobby, conference room, and hallways. And we said the commissioner's chambers. Right? No one was going to vote on that. You guys disagree with that. Um, There's a lot of hallway and areas where they put up graphics that you're not going to paint anyway. You're just going to you're going to have to block that out. What about the dispatch foyer? That was just painted. Can you see you okay. eliminate the graphics? You can put in something nicer, more. Murals. Something that's okay. Like this. Okay, so um, as far as the commission of chambers, and again, you know, this is a vote situation. I don't want to. I don't think we need to paint the commission's chambers. Is there anybody that agrees with me? Well, what's the difference in the pricing as compared to doing the whole thing and just eliminating this? I don't have the answer to this. So here's my view on the subject. <laughs> so if you, if I, I mean, some of the things we do not have to get into the weeds on, yeah. and this is one of those things. So if an, as a part of a regular maintenance program that every year there is a there is a regular maintenance so that it's not every 10 years and so we do part of it now maybe part of it next year and you spread that out over a couple of years it's not I a big deal to totally agree but that's Plus why i said you have too. to do it you have to well, but she, can't, she can't have that answer right now so right. realistically but i say if we're not happy with that number if that's the case let's come up with a number that that she can budget and then figure out where to plug fine, it in. Fine by me. So if I'm also against recarpeting this. I, I see no need for that. What is a number that well, the commission you're jumping ahead. Pardon? You're jumping ahead. No, because yeah, the one that. item is replace the flooring and the commission chambers. Yes, it's all part of number And 12. paint all of the town hall interior. That's number 12. You um, want to cut that to $20,000 and see what you can do? Well, well, first of all, where did the $45,000 come from? We received a quote from okay. a company okay. for both of these. Well, one, one bid for flooring one, and painting? They do both, and they did two bids, one for the commission chamber's floor yeah. and painting the whole building, yeah. and one to replace the other carpeting throughout. And that whole price was $45,000? No, $45,000 to replace this flooring and paint everything. $38,000 to replace all the other flooring. The building that has carpeting. Okay. Should and we I would imagine it? that there are wear areas in the other parts of the building that are more prominent than the once a month that we use this meeting for the most part. But this bill, this room doesn't get used just once a month. I know it, there's it, other times, but the heavy traffic is. I see what we if, if the forty-five thousand dollars is devoted to the room we're in and the community room, which I assume is the library. For floor, no, the community. This whole. Area. The community room separates so, at that wall. So we could easily just strike this from the budget, and then so you don't want to replace the flooring, but you still want to paste, paint the interior. You can reduce it to maybe twenty thousand and strike replacing the flooring and be only painting the interior. What is the need? You're our town manager. What do you recommend that we do as far as need? As we need, yeah. 
If we don't need it, I wouldn't have then put boom. It, I wouldn't have put it in the budget if I didn't think I needed it. it. We spent a significant amount of money yeah. on carpet cleaning for this room because of after hours events and special meetings. This meeting, this room has more than just this meeting a month. It has the, the planning and zoning, it has board of adjustment, it has all the police department training, it has um, all of the land development review meetings are held in this room. Um, so there's quite a bit that goes on that this room was booked for all month long. There gets considerable amount of traffic. And then you start having people with their special events in here that have food and beverage that we have areas where we have to spend a significant amount of time cleaning up to make sure that the carpet doesn't get stained any worse than it is because there are stains in areas. Whereas if we switch to a hard surface floor, we would not have to worry about so maybe the carpet we do cleaning the hard surface and that floor. If this is fairly decent now, how much do we pay to clean it? Without being roughly. No, I mean I'm not holding you to it. I'm just trying to um, so that if we can if we could divide this up and maybe do the flooring another time, since it's not an absolute need, well, and we have other areas right. within the budget that are absolute needs yep. which is why i said we could strike replacing the flooring from that line item and reduce it for just painting the town hall interior that would paint everything that hasn't been painted in the last five years that's this room and the colors aren't going to change and that's part of the bit is we have to stay with the same colors so can i make this simple the forty five thousand dollars is for the flooring and the painting of this room no the flooring no. and the painting of everything in town hall no because no it's not everything no, no because that's, that's, the, that's says, the flooring and painting for everything you yeah. already said part of the flooring is not included paint and town hall paint town hall interior and replace flooring in commission change. So, so the town hall interior is painting all of the okay. town hall interior. So, which is why I'm saying if we cut this down to say fifteen or twenty thousand, I think that will cover just the painting of all of the town hall interior. The, it, Can we get more than one bid? I mean, it just seems arbitrary to say you know one person told and us this is what it's going to cost. Before we purchase it we will but when we're doing budget estimates we usually go with yeah. one bid to give us a high level estimate of the maximum that we would spend so can we agree uh, Ken I don't know if you'll agree to this just start on the other side of the wall do nothing in this area whatsoever and then if you want to paint and carpet starting with the, the priorities of what's the heaviest traffic and take care of that, that's fine. I'll go along with allocating a sum certain for the purpose of the maintenance. So if we allocate $25,000 towards the maintenance or the painting and whatever else you need within that framework, I'm going along with So it. take numbers 12 and 13 and combine them. Is that what you're saying? You just allocate 25000 for To both of them. Yeah. All right. Because that'll save us And then next year, plan on, you know, and, and – you know, space it out so that you don't get hit all the time. All, you know, one. So we're not having this discussion, and they can plan accordingly. Hang on, I'm just doing some math here. They could do that over, you know, a couple of years if it warrants. If if you can do all the interior now for the for that price. So we just saved fifty eight thousand dollars. Okay, so we're taking items twelve and thirteen, combining them. And giving him a total budget of twenty-five thousand dollars. That should be a savings of fifty-eight thousand in your computer, if I did my math right. Agree, commission. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, number fourteen. Replace diesel fuel pump. Yep. We talked about this yep. last time. Um, it is. Rusting, uh, the state uh, yep. organization that inspects it has come out and told us that we need to replace it. Non right. Done. So we we're approving number 14, 15, replace unleaded fuel tank and install fleet dispensing and monitoring system. I don't remember this. No, it wasn't. Yeah, this, this, have last time. This is a new one. Um, 
We have over the last year been having problems with fuel in the town's vehicles. And it has been discovered that our unleaded tank has water infiltration into it, which means that there are cracks, holes, something like that, allowing the water in. We just had to have a company come in, pump all of the fuel out of the tank, run it through a filter system, and put it back in the tank so that they, they could take the water out. Um, well, if water's getting in, fuel's likely getting out into the soil. Are you a Cornell engineer? Well, <laughs> I owned a home with well, very it, it depends on oil tank. It's pretty common sense. <laughs> well, it, sometimes though. Sometimes tank it is, depends is on how full the, the tank is and if the cracks were at the top. Was, uh, we also have an antiquated uh, pumping system. If you remember back in the 70s and 80s where you had a pump that would click, click, click for every uh, tenth of a gallon of gas, that's still the kind of pump system we have. In order to monitor gas usage on all the town's vehicles, Every time somebody puts gas in their vehicle, they have to get a piece of paper, write down their VIN number, write down their mileage, account for exactly how many gallons of gas they put in, and sign it and turn it into dispatch. What we've also discovered after over several months is that the current pumping system is not accurate, and every quarter we're going, we have to go in and rebalance to. How many gallons are actually in the tank versus how many we say we have used? So, is there a, is there all is there always an overage of use compared to what the books say? Uh, no, there's an underage of use versus uh, the books, huh? Because the the tank isn't. Yeah. Okay. So this fleet dispensing and monitoring system that would be some kind of card reader for each yep. policeman. Each person okay. with a vehicle would have a card reader tie, and they would. That way we can track it by department and vehicle. So it sounds like we need to replace the tank anyway. Yes. And any clue when that, the age of that tank, by any chance? I, yeah. I, I couldn't tell you. Okay, hey, so. Scott, do they have a water separator system like a boat does? On that, I... Well, you yeah, might want to consider it because of yeah, core on the boat. I know you're talking about, I have okay. boat, yeah. I don't know if they do or not. I know. We have to give the numbers off of the tank for the reading, and most you can't even read the numbers because she said it's the old clicker and it gets condensation in there. You can't even read the numbers. Mm -hmm. But um, we probably, I mean, most towns go to a, a card where it has all the information, and you plug the card in and it keeps track of it. Okay, so are we good on this item? Yep. Okay, so we've approved number 15. Number 16, updated security door camera system for police department. $70,000, high priority. Well, it's not just for the police department, it's the entire building yeah. and parking lot. That's right, we went through this last meeting. We'd already, we already okayed this, I believe, mission, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Okay, I have a question mark next to this, number 17. Is this a new one as well? 17. Land acquisition. Does everyone else have a 17? Yeah, I've got it as 18 on my spreadsheet. Um, yeah, land acquisition. Right now, um, we have several properties that we have requested uh, storm drainage easements on. Um, we have areas that we need to improve our drainage infrastructure, and um, long term, we are talking still about septic to sewer conversion. The reason this would be in there and the reason it's a medium priority is if for some reason we end up having to uh, pay for drainage infrastructure or easement uh, projects of the legal fees, things like that, for those drainage easements, or if magically the uh, right parcel came available for the lift stations that we're going to need for septic to sewer based on the studies that have already been done, we would have money in the budget for it. Again, this is a line item so that would it make more, more sense and or reduce based on what if we just took the 350 and said we're going to put that into reserves this year and then if you did need it you could pull out of reserves and, and that's an option so we haven't reduced the budget we've just moved 350 into reserve well you've reduced the budget because we're not spending it here which takes our total uh 
capital projects right now from just over five million in your book to four million six hundred and forty eight. So is this land acquisition separate than what we have talked about with grants? Yes, because those would come out of contingency or cash reserves. So I guess what we're trying to ask, correct me if I'm wrong in your interpretation, Karen. We don't want to have 350 just floating for land acquisitions. We have no idea. Yeah. What we're doing. So how do we put 350? How do we put 350 in the budget in contingency? And if we don't use it, move it to reserve or? Well, I mean, the other option is to take it off of the capital, which would reduce the amount that we are transferring to capital for capital projects. The idea of putting it on this capital is that we would then be transferring that money into the restricted capital fund for future land acquisitions for those types of projects. The other real estate, Pat, what do you think? If we don't have an exact what we're gearing in and doing it, it shouldn't be in there. Move it out if you want, but I'm okay with adding it to your reserves if you want, because we're just playing in numbers, right. you know, mm -hmm. hide the ball under the cup. So if you want to move it out, but we shouldn't plan on something that we, we have no idea that we're doing it. Well, the other option is remove it entirely. And then if something does become for sale that we need, we'd have to dip further into our reserves. And how much in reserves do we have? Four million one hundred thousand. So this three hundred fifty thousand we can handle. Ah, there's this. What's that's the, the whole? That's the whole purpose of it. You know, part of it reserves is for the budget to carry you in an emergency. The other part of it is to handle situations like that. In, in terms of a land or some other issue that pops up that we're unexpected. Right, and we should do what that nice accountant did whenever he comes. We have four hundred, four million one hundred, whatever it is on the front page, and we have a budget of eleven three. So the percentage that for if, if the town got hit by a hurricane, we could run the town for X percent of the year, which equals how many months before we ran out. We should get that number before the end of the budget discussions mm -hmm. because the I don't know Phil you were here when the guy was talking about 60 well it's easy to do all we got right take the budget put four million over the budget get a percentage and that yeah. percentage times 12 months you no know, realistically the only the, the cash flow is still coming in there might be a delay because of technology because of damage and everything else but your ad valorem taxes are still going to come so that's already predetermined yeah. So the likelihood of a of a total emergency where you're using four million dollars in terms of a yeah, budget crisis right. is not, not is not right. Okay, so we're striking number seventeen totally from the budget discussion. Is that agreed? Are you sure you don't want to put it in contingency or reserves or put a piece? No, in because it? as Ken's pointing out, if we need three hundred fifty out of four million. We just pull it out of reserves and maybe that'll affect the tax. If we had a plan, Phil, I'd say, yeah, there was something that we were really doing, but there's no plan. So uh, unless we're build, trying to build up the reserve to do so, that's different. If we're building, if we're saying, listen, we want to allocate, and we've done this in the past, yeah. maybe 20 years ago, but we purposely built up the reserves. We, in fact, we did that. Um, I know so because we built up a savings account way back in the early 2000s because we knew we were going to be doing a new town hall. We knew we were going to be doing some of this stuff. So we started to build up the reserve for that purpose. So if, if you're telling us, Lynn, that that is the case, then that's so, so be it. But we have $4 million in reserves. The 350 is not going to make much of a dent. The other thing I throw into the equation is, remember, we did spend 1.5 on the priest land. It, it, it appears we're going to get $750,000 back, appears, mm -hmm. right? So maybe we should take a portion of this 350 in the earmark it for reserves to start to build back to a stronger reserve place. 
Like maybe well, take a hundred. Well, our net right, right now is four million plus yeah. in reserves. So we used to be five point three, and then we. Well, it. but if we get the seven fifty back, it goes into that, right? You good point. What's the commission's wishes on this? Nix it, put a hundred into reserve, move, just or just rid it from the budget. To give you an idea, if we nix it and we readjust based on that for what we need to transfer from the general fund to capital projects minus that amount, we are That brings us to a point where our revenues over expenditures total in the budget are now <clears throat> 176469 that's having taken the 750,000 of potential anticipated revenues for the grant that we're asking for the priest fund out and the reductions that we've already done in the capital account. It, excluding the 350,000. Excluding the 350,000. So if we took 350,000 out, we'd actually be up 125. Right, but that is with, out any further discussion on the employee personal right. costs. Right, that's what we're getting at. We, yeah, we're you're you're trying to take care of right. personnel, and, and we need money to accomplish right. some of that. We have 176469 right now to accomplish. We're over budget by that much. Of revenues over expenditures without doing anything different then the 5% merit increase, which nope, is nope, the nope, max nope. for personal. 176,000 over budget after you've subtracted the 20,000, 30,000. Yes. Now, if we subtract the entire 350. No, that's what the that's entire 350 subtracts. We're still 176,000. How did we get from 174 to, I mean, from 484 revenues over expenditures to 176? Because we're reducing that 750, but we're also reducing how much we're transferring to capital projects out of the general fund to cover all of the capital projects. Are you following this? Yeah, so you, they <laughs> yeah. got rid of the 750 yeah. as revenue, yeah. but they're also decreasing the 1.6 million of expenses. Okay. You follow me? So yeah. we're kind of trying to meet in the middle. So I'm not an accountant. Okay. Even with the land acquisitions now gone from the budget. Yes. With the capital expenditures that we have, excluding your 9% that you're trying to get the staff, we're still 176 over? Yeah. Yes? Yes. At 5.5? 5.5. Well, then something's screwed. No. No, you took 750 no. out. Because you took the 750 in potential revenues out. So, you never should have been in so your, 400, your 400 turned into a negative... 300 and now you're nick you know knocking that 300 down right because you got rid of twenty thousand dollars for carpeting whatever so we're, we're not there yet to zero so but. i guess we're, we're building a budget on a false on a potentially false premise that we are going to get grant money no no we no, have taken that grant we took money it out. out that's out that's out any incoming money has been removed yeah, yes. that's the big any, negative any that we're dealing maybe with. money is out. Right. You got to remember, when we started today, the capital fund 
total projects of carryovers and new projects equaled $5,076,506. We are now down to a grand total of capital projects of $4,648,506. So we've dropped, let's see what, $350,425,000 in capital project expenditures. Okay. But to balance that so that we're also not taking as much out of the general funds, tax revenues, etc., I've taken out that 750 maybe money and I have reduced the general fund transfer to capital from 1.6 million to 1.158 million. That gives us a balance in the capital account of a negative $92 in revenue over expenditures just from this year's expenditures, not including the fund balance, but it leaves the general fund balanced with additional revenues over expenditures only in the general fund of $176,469 because of those adjustments we've made. Right. But that is $176,000 that we do not have. No, that is $176,000, which is more revenue than we are anticipating spending. Okay. Gotcha. That's my confusion. So when you, originally you said we're, I wrote down $176,000 over budget, but you're saying we're $176,000 over revenues versus expenditures. Yes, of okay. revenues over gotcha. our total expenditures. Revenues are at eleven million one hundred and thirteen thousand six hundred and fifty-two. Expenditures right now are at ten million nine thirty-seven one eighty-three. Okay, so we're not in bad shape. No. Okay, I missed that. Okay, carryover projects. Carryover projects are projects that we have been working on. Um, they include the Ocean Avenue sidewalks. Uh, we have done some work on them, but I left money here because FDOT is doing their mill and resurface project in fiscal year 24. And I want to make sure that if we want to do anything at the same time or as a result, because my understanding is they are raising the street, we have money to do so along there. So that still has $50,000 in it. The Ocean Avenue street light replacements, um, the lights at the intersection of Ocean Avenue and North Ocean, as well as the lights at the bridge. FDOT is requiring that they be replaced. And when we replace them, we will have to get new heads because we cannot get heads similar to the ones we have now, as well as we cannot get non-LED streetlights any longer. The estimate for that project is a million dollars we are trying to potentially be able to reduce that if we can get it designed and work with fpnl and fdot to where maybe fdot um, includes this in their mill and resurface project so they're using their engineer that's doing the lights at ocean avenue and north ocean um, also working with FPNL to see if they will put up the lights and we will convert to just paying the electricity or paying a lease payment on the poles and the fixtures so that in the future when any maintenance needs done. But right now, the estimate based on Billy speaking to two different companies about those lights is a million dollars to do that project. Okay. 
Not all at once. All at once. And as I said, since FDOT is already going to be in there, it makes the most sense to do it all at once because they're already going to have everything torn up. So you probably don't know the answer to this question. How far are they tearing up? They are doing Ocean Avenue, I think the road all the surface. way, the road service mill and resurfacing all the way to, I believe, where the Boykin Town Hall is, and they are elevating it. And when they're elevating it, we don't know what that's going to do in terms of the curb and gutter, the grassy areas on either side, or the sidewalks through there. And who's going to be responsible for that? Depends on what happens. Um, they will be responsible for returning it to its current state, but having raised the road, just returning it to its current state may no longer be a desirable look for the town. Do they, I mean, have, there, have they provided any plans, any drawings, renderings of what they're when you say raising the road, that's a, that's a big engineering undertaking. Like, are, can we see what it's supposed well, to look when like? I, when they're talking about raising the road, what they're talking about is, I believe it is a three inch mill and a five or six inch overlay. So that's what they're considered raising the road. They're milling less off than they're coming back and overlaying with. Yeah. What's their uh, reason for doing this? Traffic? Traffic, flooding, um, wear and tear. Okay. Uh, well, then the drainage is their responsibility if they're reconfiguring the road, right? Correct. But as I said, well, once all of this is done, they only have to put the sidewalks and the curb, the way we have things on either side of Ocean Avenue, back the way it is currently we may find that that is not aesthetically pleasing to our community once they have replaced it. Whether that means that now our sidewalks slope down at a greater angle than we want because the road is higher and they've just created a surface where it's ADA compliant at the edge and not the full width of the sidewalk. I've seen that done before. Um, and FDOT does not have a program in which when typically when in, a, in the private sector, if they did that, they'd be paying for the improvement to the curb and gutter and everything else that's going on there. Correct. So are you telling us that they don't have that program with the municipality? It's all on us? Because I, it's not returning to the same standard because if they're raising it, that's not the same standard that we had before. If there was a seven inch or an eight inch gap of curb and it's they're cutting that, that's not the same standard. My understanding is they only have to replace it like to like. So if they raise the road, they don't have to put in all new curb and gutter because it, unless they destroy the curb and gutter, they're going to leave the curb and gutter. Uh, yeah, but if, they, if that curb and gutter has, okay, I'll give you the example. Let's say they raise the road equal to the to the height of the curb. Are you telling me they don't have to fix the curb? Yes. But you said that they're milling down three inches. I believe so. Yeah. And then they're putting on six or seven, so a net net increase of three or four inches. Correct. That's it's hard to imagine milling down three inches. That's pretty no. steep. Uh, when we um, did the roads in town, it was an inch and a half. Yeah, but this is high traffic. Yeah, this is a, this isn't considered a city road. This is considered a high traffic street. So the higher the traffic volume, the greater the mill. I, here's the bottom. I don't, I don't know if we have enough information to make a yeah. fully informed decision on whether or not what to do with the lighting. Furthermore, um, I don't think we're. I mean, there might be other options there in terms of type of lighting other than what's there. There's no obligation that we have to keep what's there. Correct. We don't have to necessarily match the other side of the road. I remember when we did those lights to begin with, it was, you know, the color of the bridge and the color of the light bulb. You're like, oh my God. If they, if they need our cooperation, they, they shouldn't they come might, in with us? 
this is a carryover project. This is not a project we just started. This yeah, but we year. don't have we, carryover a million dollars. We, we, no, we don't. We, we can reduce the amount. Um, there was less in the streetlight fund last year for that line item. It was only $125,000. But at current prices, if we replace the street lights, and we're keeping in mind, this is just to replace the light poles, the electrical, the heads, that type of thing. That's what this line item is. $125,000 will maybe replace one, one, one street pole light. is $125,000? With the electrical work that needs to be done, right now we have problems with the breaker boxes. Um, at the bottom, Billy says they get water in them, and, and we have an engineer's report that, or some other report that indicates all of this. Um, Billy has reports about it, yeah, because he's going out and switching out the electrical stuff on a regular basis over there because of wear and tear. This is a carryover project that has been being carried over for probably this will be the fourth year because the commission has disagreed on whether to put LED versus uh, metal halide type lights, which are the old traditional. You can no longer get metal halide or sodium uh, pressure street lights. They don't make them. Um, you can only purchase LED street light heads. Um, we could do this project a whole lot cheaper if um, we tell FDOT and FPNL that we don't want anything to do and we don't want decorative lights there and they just come in and put the standard one arm high illumination lights like you see in parking lots or down the highway. Um, How far would ways. those extend? The entire length from the bridge to anyway? There are yes. dozens of those lamp poles. I don't know if you've they, they, really noticed. You, you I, I, when the, I when we talked about it before, I thought yeah. they're and in talking with FP, FDOT, crazy. Uh, just a brief conversation with their lighting engineer, he believes with the upgraded LED, we can probably put in fewer. We will no longer need lights on both sides of the street in every same location. Okay, we'll so this is them. just, you know what this is telling me? I don't know what happened the past few years, if this is the fourth year, but we should have this outlined if, if they really discussed this over the past few years, why don't we have an outline? Well, do you do this, A, B, C, or D? And with 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 um, um, conviction is in terms of exactly knowing what the options are. I can kind of answer that question. When we did this last year for the, the FY23, it was 125000 to replace the lights. Yeah. And then and then it's grown to this million dollar monster, and I don't understand how that's going to bulb to replace the bulb. It was the bulb and the head to yeah. stay within a decorative look. And then we had a discussion about if we want the same color poles as Boynton or we want to differentiate. And that was the extent of the discussion. So now you're saying is that we need new poles. We need new poles, we need new heads. And we've been told that we need new poles. We have or is it just poles. Billy saying we need new poles? He's not an electrician, right? I mean, One of the, he does a lot. I know that, but. No, but Chris is an electrician. Chris Sorrell, who works in our public works department, is an electrician. He's the one that does most of the electrical work for the town now. Um, he's the one that goes out and works with Billy and does the replacements. One of the challenges of not changing the poles, but trying to change the fixtures the fixture meaning the top. The, the, the head, we're, we're, the, the decorative part that actually has the light is depending upon the age, they may not be compatible. You're going to have different connection types. If the pole that we have is not the same manufacturer as the fixture that we purchase, they may not be compatible. You're also looking at, you're going to most likely have to take the poles down anyhow, because if we put up brand new fixtures, 
they're going to be freshly painted and you would be putting them on weathered poles. So you're going to, at the very least, take the poles down and have them repainted so that they have a fresh coat of paint and look the same as the lights. Otherwise you have, if we stay with teal, brand new teal fixtures on faded teal poles. Okay, so I, let me, we need a, we need to know our options. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Is it, and I, I our requirements. Is, so again, but in terms of this budget, hold in on. In terms of this budget, Wait. we would be budgeting for a carryover of up to a million dollars. Any expenditure, any final project work would still have to come to the commission for you to decide how far we are going with this project. Where, what where's the million dollars yeah. in the budget? Line 21 of capital, the FY24 capital. That same list that we've just been going through. Right, you're talking, carry over projects. Yeah, you know what? We're going we're to carry it over. In, in my view, we're going to carry it over one more year because I don't see where we have enough information to make any decisions. And we have, we have a more important thing is the water main replacement. And I'm not convinced, I'm sorry, respectfully, I'm not convinced the information that we're getting is complete. Well, I, so until such time as we get that, then we can make an informed decision. The fixtures on the bridge do have to be replaced. I've gotten multiple emails from the company that maintains the bridge asking us when we're going to replace them because we've got heads that are missing. Wait, whoa, whoa, on the bridge? Uh, on our side of that bridge area, right there at the end. When you say stopped. the bridge, do you mean half of the bridge, or do you mean where the bridge ends into Ocean Avenue? Uh, the portion of the bridge that we're responsible for. I didn't know we were responsible for a portion of the bridge. For some of the lighting, because we because it's decorative lighting. The town is responsible for some of the lights, and Boynton is responsible. So we might for decide. Lights. Listen, we don't want the decorative lighting. Right? Yep. Okay. So where's that option? <coughs> I, I think this is deserving, and I am done with this, quite frankly, because I think we need to spend time on the personnel, because I think that is a heavier conversation than this right now until we get more information. So that's my view. Do you agree? Uh, what I would like to do, instead of having Chris do it best he can, there must be companies that do this, that can come in. And who have done it for other towns that the FDOT recommends this subcontractor come analyze the situation for us. And then we'll know what we're talking about. Because to have a million dollars just pop out of the sky, you know, is, is we, we can't deal with it. We don't know what we're dealing with. Have you met with the FDOT about this? Uh, about certain parts of it, yes. About needing the bridge lights replaced, yes. And so, so totality, you've sat down with them. And they've told you what they're willing to do or not willing to do and the options. No, they've told us what has to be done, not what they're willing to do, because they don't consider the street lights to be part of the paving project, but that they need to be done. Can they yeah. come talk to the commission and to the public about this? I mean, it, we, don't understand we, need, what we're, we yeah. need more information. Um, trying to find, here we go. Um, please see below two work orders issued by FDOT with due dates for the decorative street light fixtures on the Ocean Avenue Bridge. These are located on the east side of the bridge. Please see details. Please advise us on the status and the completed pictures so they can be properly closed. This is Ocean Avenue. Uh, Secure light fixture adjacent to the near outgoing traffic gates and replace missing DEC deck walkway light fixtures on the south side of the bridge. And how much is it to do that? They're just telling us it has to be done. But that's just one area. Oh, okay. One well, wait, 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 wait. There is in So addition, wait a minute. We've been told that something has to be done. Have we gone out to a bid to get that repaired? No, because all of the street lights on Ocean Avenue have been a discussion item for the past several years. It makes <clears throat> the most sense as, in my professional opinion, 
not just to replace two decorative heads at the bridge and not to let FDOT put additional lighting at A1A and Ocean Avenue, which they're currently doing, if down the road we really truly are going to do something to fix the lights on Ocean Avenue and to do them all as one project. Okay, so if you would rather me... piecemeal the lights at Ocean Avenue and North Ocean and let FDOT put in their standard long arm parking lot road lights and have us just replace with best guess, best that we can find for the bridge lights. We can do those two projects but then we will have our portion of Ocean Avenue book ended with different lights than what the rest of the street looks like. So just okay. the bookends. You've mentioned the intersection. The only place they're going to put the ugly one is at the intersection of Ocean. They're putting two of them at that intersection. Ocean and? And North Ocean, yes. Uh, uh, A1A. Because they so say those, that the by way, are the identical lights have... that are at Wolverine. Because So we would have that intersection lit up, and then they're requiring more lighting at the east side of the bridge, that's all they're requiring from us. So I'm not an aesthetics kind of guy, but I don't care about the speed light poles in between. So you do, even though we've been talking about for several so years. This is, a little 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 of this, is this is a little different than a judgment call professionally as to whether or not you a room needs to be painted ongoing maintenance. This is a truly a capital project as opposed to what I view as a maintenance of painting, yeah. right? So this is something that we need to have more information on to make an informed decision. I don't know how else best I can explain that. So until such time as we have that information, it's very difficult for us to stand up here and say anything. If, if we've been directed from what I'm hearing that there are two things that need to be fixed, I want to know how much it costs to fix that. It's not going to cost us right? anything to the A1A intersection. No, no. You're, you're, not, just you're not hearing what she just said. She said that they've been ordered with two work orders to fix something Who? deficient on the bridge. Is that correct? Oh, that is no. correct. On Thank bridge. you. So, we'll move to A1A. Job, wait a minute. Stop it. And in that sense, we need to know how much, if we're responsible for fixing that, we need that should definitely be in the budget. But I hear you say, well, why fix that when we're going to replace other things? But well, maybe we don't. So maybe we need to know how much is it going to cost to at least get us to a point where we're not deficient in our responsibilities, number one. And then you come with us with, uh, with the town engineer. I don't care who you do it with, but tell us what they're doing. Because I'm lost with these. Oh, they're going to put a lamp. On A1A, they're going to put a lamp there. What's the impact of that? What does this mean? What do we need to do? Maybe we don't need those decorative lamps because they're not that decorative in my view. They've never been that, that decorative in my view. But that's personal, the color and everything else. But we were forced with that at the time. I was involved here with the town when they, when they shoved those colors and that down our throat. They, we didn't have much of a choice. They said, these are yours. But it now sounds like we have a choice that we no longer, since it's our responsibility, we no longer have to abide by what they told us some time ago. We just need to, to do with whatever our responsibility is. So now we need to look at that whole situation, that whole Ocean Avenue and say, what is needed? What should we do? If we're choosing to do a decorative lamp, that's fine, but what kind? How much is that going to be? What's our responsibility? Fully acknowledging that these lamp poles are very expensive for a reason. Right? If a car hits it, a truck hits it, or whatever the case may be, there is a liability associated with those street lamps. Fully aware of that. So all I'm saying is I think we need more information to make a better decision about this discussion. I, and right now, we need to talk about the personnel. Right. So. So just to close this out, because I think there's some confusion here, FDOT is putting up the stronger light on A1A. 
Yes, there right. is so going to be they one are going just to around that. the corner of A1A and North Ocean on the north side. It's an existing pole that's going to remain. The new luminaire will be replaced with a LED fixture. But they're going to do that. That's that because that's a, that's an FDOT. Do problem. we have the plans? Can I finish right right my thought process? The, the only yeah. thing they've asked yeah. us to do is the edge of the bridge. We can do all we want about a talk all we want about the A1A intersection, but they're going to dictate what goes there. That's correct. Right. They're going to dictate what's going there because, according to FDOT, the fixtures that are there currently do not meet the minimum candle foot wattage. Right. That's their problem. Well, it's our problem. No, but they, they're going to do it. Right. We, we can't yeah, tell them. state roads. Right. They... So we can't dictate to them, please lower the lights. It's not going to happen. So. No, but you could tell them a different type of light to put on as long as it has. Well, from what I heard, they now are down to one light, and that's an LED. You can't use the sodiums, and you can't use, what do you call it, the well, high light. Yeah. Oh, okay. So that's do we have two lamps there now? Two light poles? Uh, yeah, the, the and they're going to replace those. They're going to replace because the lights they, on them because, because they don't provide adequate so the intersection. Are they going to replace the poles or just the heads? They're replacing just the luminaires there. What's a luminaire mean? The, the heads. The heads. Okay. okay. So now, with respect to that, if we if we ask them, what are you doing with that? Show us what you're doing, and maybe we decide. Well, maybe those heads aren't so bad for the rest of the line. How much are those heads? And maybe we piggyback on the DOT project or what which they're doing. Which is what I was talking about doing, which is why that million dollars is there. No, and no, you were talking about replacing the poles, each pole. Because the poles that they're putting the new luminaires on are current existing wooden Poles. They're not our decorative poles. Oh, they're not the poles. decorative poles. Okay. Yes, because they're already on A1A, gotcha. not on Ocean Avenue. Gotcha. So at the end of the day, we could have FDOT control the intersection. We could prepare the end of the bridge as we choose. We can leave the current lighting there and struggle along in between. And explore our options. Correct. And, pr and price it out. Yeah. And in the meantime, see renderings or drawings of what they're going to be doing to the road i mean there's there are a lot of unknowns here at least from our perspective yeah. so the number 18 and 19 are in the limbo land for more information they carry overs how do we handle this land it's 18. we need to fix those bridge ones if we've been noticed on them yeah but yeah. when you said fix them, didn't you say you had to change one of the, the heads, like the whole head? Well, the, the problem is, and I, I wish I could connect my computer so you guys can see it on the monitor. It is a two-headed fixture of which one of the lights is no longer there. It's missing. So they're supposed it's round, and there's supposed to be a light here, and there's supposed to be a light here. This one is missing. So in order to replace and fix that light, we have to put something else at the top of that pole, which is not going to be able to be identical to what's on this side of the pole. Can we just change the other bulb? So you have two identical bulbs? It's the fixture. It's the fixture, it's not the bulb. It is. So we just get two new fixtures. But it's not going to match the other fixtures. Okay. You had this pole here. So there's a light fixture here. There is supposed to be a light fixture there. It is missing. Yeah. There is another location on the bridge where one of those fixtures is missing from the pole. So yeah. did we contact DOT to get the name of the outfit that built those poles to begin with to see if they still have those fixtures? Yes, we did that when... The commission first started budgeting for the Ocean Avenue Street Light Replacement Program, and they don't make those so, fixtures. So, right, so anymore. they don't make those fixtures. So, buy two new fixtures. Can we place just, in other words, can what he's saying is, can we just replace the fixture? We, both, both, both of them. Yeah. We can, but then we will have 
one poll that has two fixtures that are completely different than every other fixture on but, the street. But, but perhaps no, wait, maybe we change this the fixtures out on all the poles. Yeah, but then we can't change Boynton, so you'd be driving. Uh, we don't over, care about that. Yeah. You know, but you'd be driving over the bridge. Half yeah. the bridge will look one way, and you come down to us, right. and we're going to look right. different. You vented over the bridge. Well, that's, you'll know the property. <laughs> I don't know what it looks like. I mean, I, I don't know what we're options are. Okay, so we need more information. And Lynn, visuals. we're just going to leave it with you as far as what to do in the budget because we're we're considering that money's not spent and it's a carryover. Right. Okay. Unless we have okay, since for the past four years you've allocated they, not you, but they've allocated, the commission's allocated money towards this building it up or no? They have budgeted money, but in reviewing the last two years and the financials. We have scheduled transfers from the general fund to capital projects that did not take place. So funds yeah. that would have been appropriated previously into the capital funds budget for these projects to build up were never transferred. So they're non-existent. They're non-existent. So Say we had put 125,000 for the last three years each year while we were discussing this into capital. I can say, having looked specifically at 22 and 21, the total amount of funds that were supposed to have been transferred from the general fund to the capital fund does not equal what was budgeted for transfers from the general fund to the capital fund. So, Tracy said she was going to do something and didn't. She budgeted for it, but it did not happen. The only thing I remember, okay, is the hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars for all the lights. We can reduce that line item to one hundred and twenty-five thousand. That's fine. no right. Right now, we're doing we're doing nothing other than waiting for more. Because I don't know what it means. Right. Exactly. Okay. So, Lynn, um, we're just going to leave it there. If that's carryover at the end of September 31, it's carryover and goes to reserves or whatever. We haven't done anything with the money. It would spent. go over. It would carry over specifically only into capital reserves. Okay. Okay. So we know we need more information, um, and you're going to talk to FDOT about the options yes. and what they're demanding. All right. Number 20, tropical pump station generator. This generator has been on order for. So we don't need to discuss some, it. It's spent. No, it, it's spent. It's just waiting to actually be spent. A1A water main replacement ARP funding. ARP fund. This is the project on the north end of town that yep. the commission approved. Yep. The 900000 is the funds that we received from the federal government. So that is already accounted for of funds that we already took in and received. The funds are sitting there and the funds are sitting there. provided. Yes. Fine. And so what's the 489? That's the cost of the project or? The 489 was, I'm not sure why that's what she budgeted last year other than that was that year's second that disbursement yeah. uh, revenue. But the project, the whole project is going to cost the 900,000. The whole project will probably cost one and a half to two million dollars by my guess because of inflationary costs. But it was originally anticipated to cost nine hundred dollars. I think the four eighty nine was a certain section. Okay. Uh, you got two disbursements you, over two fiscal years, FY right. twenty one and FY twenty two split evenly of um, Four hundred and some thousand each year, so that would be why it was four hundred and eighty-four last year. Was because that was accounting for what we received in FY22. We have actually only spent that. We had to do a report on it. Actually, so can, maybe we can just move on. We have the money. We have and the money. We're going yes. to spend it doing what we allotted it. Correct. And it's not even our money. Thank the government. Right. Okay. Harbor Drive drainage project two fifty. 
Yeah. This is a project, again, it was budgeted last year at 250,000. We have been working with the property owners to obtain the easements that we need to complete And if you don't project. get the easements and this goes beyond September 31st, what happens to the 250? If it goes beyond uh, September 20, 31st of 2024? September 30th of 2024. Of this year? Right. Um, well, right now that money hasn't been transferred to capital. Okay, so it's just sitting there. So it's just sitting there. So there's no decision to be made because we've already decided to spend it. Right. And we just I can't get permission from a citizen. Right. Okay. We're done with capital. Anybody got anything else to add? All right, Lynn, you want to lead the personnel? And by personnel, please define what you mean by discussion of personnel. All right. And what page? What tab are, are we on? We are on the personnel tab. Might say HR, but it should say personnel. Should be right behind public works. HR. All right. Um, personnel is employees, whether that be the police department employees, town hall employees, building department employees, it is personnel. Um, right now, I am asking to move our part-time inspector to full-time. That way there's more than adequate time to do code enforcement as well as the additional responsibilities. The budget that you have has our total expenditures and revenues only accounts for a 5% merit increase for all employees, which is what the towns historically has done other than last year when they did the one one time payment at the beginning of the year. Um, but I have also provided you with some alternatives. The FRS system rates have increased, so there is that increase. Right now our health, dental, vision plan coverage rates increased by approximately 5% in 22 at the remaining flat in 21. This year we're looking at potentially best case scenario or worst case scenario, depending upon how you look at it, of a 1% increase. Um, did you, what, were, what was done about um, changing health insurance? Because the discussion was that it was less than... I uh, have been soliciting bids and I am still getting additional bids. Um, our current broker that handles our coverage for us provided me only the renewal for Blue Cross. Despite multiple conversations with her that I wanted alternatives. Um, she gave me the renewal when I asked her about other options. She said she didn't see any point. There was only a 0.65% increase. Spoke to another broker. They have provided me with alternatives that would be a United Healthcare HMO um, that is a similar plan to our current one, but would be approximately a 10% increase and options for a company called AV Med, which is a health insurance buying consortium, you might call it, that was developed in Miami for by the Miami Chamber of Commerce. Have looked at that, challenges with that. Um, their pricing is competitive, but their coverage is not. None of the options that they have um, have statewide coverage. Um, one of the options only has coverage for physicians in Miami, Dade, Broward, and Palm Beach counties only. Another one only allows for coverage in Florida, excluding the panhandle of Florida, but with zero out of network coverage. So if you don't go to one of their network doctors, there is no coverage and it is 100% out of your pocket. Um, 
But okay, I so just suffice it to say you're exploring other options. But I am still exploring other options. So are you asking us to make a decision on $2,500 or 3%? Is that what you're basically asking us? No. No, that, I have provided you multiple. There is the standard 5%. That is the first letter That's size paper that you have. That is if we make no changes. The second page is if you if everyone would receive a 3% cost of living increase to their base salaries on October 1 and still be eligible for the 5% merit at their annual valuation, up to 5% merit. The difference between those two is um, 36,000 36, uh, change year over year. Where are you finding this? Wait, where, where are you getting at the, I'm at not the bottom, bottom right, there's okay. a green uh, cell. That 405,118 oh. on the first one is the total payroll and benefit difference between FY23 and FY24. Mm -hmm. So if you compare that same cell, to be one with a 3% increase, it is 441,391 year over year. So a 36% or $36,000 increase. Can I ask a question? Yeah. Um, last August when this all came up and I have, I actually printed this out. It's a CPI historical tables. So last June, CPI was at 9.1%. And that prompted the whole discussion about a cost of living bonus, basically, for employees, which was approved. The same month in 2023, CPI is 3%, not 9.1. And I'm just wondering, like, have leading up to last year, was this a conversation? Like, do we give a cost of living bonus to employees always? I thought, I thought it was a one-off thing last year. Yeah, I thought that's what it was, right? Yeah. So what you're, so what, I don't know, why are we? Well, because it's not in the base now. So you gave them 9%, like for example, if you got start with $100, now you're at 109, but only for that year. Right. When you go to the next year, you're down to the $100 No, you're again. getting a 5% merit. Oh, case. right, yeah, you got it. Yeah, it's, way, it's cost not, of it's living year over year. Right. Okay. And, and we because... did it exactly for what Phil and Carol are saying. So we didn't raise base salaries. That's why we did the bonus. And that's why in your cover letter, what I was bringing up is you seem to be saying we can do an increase of either 3% or $25,000. 2,500. 2,500. Yes. So, which now, to I, my I, brain I, I, says I, bonus versus permit. No, I, the 3% of the 2,500 are still both going to the base. There's another sheet in your packet that shows if we want to do a one-time allotment. I would like to address what Karen... Commissioner Cassidy said the June numbers were 3%. However, every month leading up to that over the past 12 months has been greater than that. In fact, the first quarter CPI for this area was over 9%. I, it was 6.4 in January, 6 in February, 5 in March. Are you looking March. for the Miami date or the general national CPI? Because national. The national, you cannot use the national CPI. We live in the Miami, Fort Lauderdale, West Palm Beach metropolitan area, which has the highest inflation rate in the country and far exceeds what the inflationary rate is yes, for that, anywhere accurate. else in the country. I, I, I confirm that. So here, we just have a basic question. What you're trying to do is get your employees more money. You're the CEO of this company. Yes. We're not, we're the board of directors. So as CEO, you have fiduciary responsibility here, as do we. Correct. So to jump everyone's base salary is a large payroll consequence forever. To say, okay, look, you've lost 9% this year, you can get a merit up to 5%. Uh, should we do some kind of both? The, the other thing on it, I believe Phil on the $7,500, it wasn't just for cost of living. I think it was also post pandemic, the people pitching in during the pandemic, if I remember correctly. Which is why I provided. 
the first sheet behind all of the pullout sheets would be one time lump sums similar to what you did last year. And where's year. that sheet? And that's right behind all of the large sheets after that. This sheet? Yes, that's your next sheet. Show me what line to go to. Or tell me. Uh, go clear down to the bottom. If we do a $7,500 lump sum again for full time and half of that for our part time. It, it, the last line of my sheet says dispatch. Then believe yeah, there that, should be there should be numbers sheet. right below that. Gotcha. That are in bold. So the first column lump sum $7,500 for full time, $3,750 for our part time. That is a total one time payment of $210,000. The next column would be if you would give a lump sum 3% payment. Not based, not on top of salary, as a just separate as a payment. Separate a stipend, lump, I think yes, we call it. Yes, a one-time payment. Mm -hmm. That is 67,321.90. A 4% lump sum payment is Eighty-nine seven sixty-two fifty-three, and a five percent lump sum is one hundred and twelve two hundred and three sixteen. Gotcha. Now, if you did crazy and you did the nine percent, which is what the regional cost of living has actually increased, throwing that out there, that would be a lump sum payment of. Two hundred one thousand nine sixty five sixty nine. I'm not saying that anyone would turn that down, but I also realistically cannot see the commission doing that, and don't know of any other communities in the area that are giving that type of an adjustment. But have you talked to other? I'm sorry. Have you talked to other town managers? Are are they routinely giving cost of living bonuses to employees? No, they routinely give cost of living increases every year plus performance review merit increases. Well, that that was going to be my point. Where are we in staffing level comparing to everybody else in, in what we're paying them? Because you're doing some lump sum here and some increases here. You you're really bouncing people all over the place. Where are we when you compare us to the area? The closest I can get is the PEPI study, and it's going to vary from position to position. Um, I'm pulling it. What's the I, PEPI you know, I, it might be as the uh, public employees, personnel. Uh, Why don't you pick up the phone, call Linda Stump to the, to the north and Greg to the south and find out where we are in relationship to our general vicinity. Because our positions don't always... No, it won't be exact, but we can certainly have it under, for example... We'll, we'll see them all this week. Um, we could... We could um, no, we find out. Um, for example, I think Manalapan's raising their base salary for initial police officers that was reported and some other things. So at least we can find out what's going on. So I, I do have a question though. I'm trying to understand. Last year, you gave a nine percent flat bonus. No, they just will. gave a flat, I believe, seventy five hundred one time. Seventy five hundred. Okay. So they're based and increased by seventy five hundred. Correct. Correct. All right. So if inflation, if the if if it's a nine percent inflation, so now we they drop back. From the 7,500, because the 7,500 was intended to be part of that, correct? To handle the inflation that was correct. going on. Okay. So if they jump back to the base salary before, they're actually worse off than they are today, because inflation went up. Now there's another inflation, so they're they're off. Yeah, but you're ignoring the fact that not only did they get 7,500, they also got Merit raises. Well, whatever that, okay, fine, that's fine. But I don't know what does that mean? Where in the spectrum does this fit in to where I want to be fair to these folks? These are, yeah. this is very important. Right. Right. To, to give you an idea, more so than the lamp poles. Towns so, in the area did put together a survey uh, earlier this summer. 
Comparisons. The clerk position at the City of Gulf is paid $61,480. At Gulfstream, $92,650. At Juno Beach, $94,65.65. To Cuesta, $116,460. Lantana, $94,519. Belle Glade, 89,976. Royal Palm, 121,458. Well, that can't look just in a vacuum because there might be a buildup for those folks that were longevity within that community that has 20 years of be, being a town clerk. So, so what we and, have to do is convert that same information. Our salary ranges. Takes that into consideration. Takes that into consideration. Okay. So now where are we within the means of that salary range consideration? Where are we in your budget, proposed budget, do we fit within this category? And do do the do the merit or the twenty five hundred dollars, what is your recommendation as to what we should do to make sure that we're in a position where we're not only competitive, but we're treating yeah. we're treating our personnel fairly? Yeah. Well, we have two specific positions where we have individuals that, due to tenure with the community, are exceeding our maximum salary range. That is police patrol officers and the police sergeants. That was the case. Those are two positions. Those are two not positions. people, positions. Positions. So that in those two positions, we are beyond, that we are being way more than fair. That's what you're saying. Well, yes, but they're being paid in excess of the maximum because of how long they've been here okay. with the town. Okay, that's fair. Um, the others, we generally fall towards the midpoint of our salary ranges for our current employee salaries, which is what you want to do with your salary ranges. You want to keep them at the mid range. Relative. Okay. Um, the proposed salary ranges do include two potential new positions the accounting clerk to train to replace Jean when she retires, and moving the current part time code enforcement building inspector to a full time position. Those are the only major changes to the proposed salary ranges. In both the three percent that that's really not a change in the salary range that's a change in the position right those are great yeah so that's not has nothing to do with the salary but in keeping both the 2500 and the the, the three percent either one plus the five percent cost of living all employees again except for the employees in those two police positions that already exceed the maximums still stay relatively close to the midpoint of our salary ranges and comparable to salary ranges for other communities in the area. But in your calculation, did you calculate the 7,500 one-time payment or did you take No, that? because that is, that, that, that is not part of your base salary. That does not go into your salary calculation. No, but it did happen. It's it not that it's not happen. significant. I'm not saying it's not significant. But that was a year ago. Right. That was a one time. It does not change base salary. It does not change our salary ranges. Okay. No, but we all we do it. have merit pay. And I just want to say, because we only have 13 minutes left, that I res completely respect that you are in charge of the staff here and that it is a priority. And we respect everybody that works here. The same, by the same token, we are elected by the residents of the community and to protect their interests. And if we're having a, a conversation about giving cost of living increases to in some way, shape or form to employees, we also need to be having the conversation about reducing the tax burden to the extent that we can for residents, particularly given insurance costs have gone through the roof for everybody that owns property um, and inflation affects everybody so we need to simultaneously be having that conversation well i think that's and nobody the next we, issue though or whatever issue you want but can we i think we've got to stay on payroll first well right. wait a minute here. but, we got, but look, till this, what, this then, when are we going to talk about it right this is town meeting starting 12 minutes. when is the next budget meeting 
Uh, can we add one just can we for add, this? One. Can add one? Yes. Let's add one we just for this topic. Else. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So it would be what, what's today's date? The seventh. Can we do it near a, another meeting? Well, I don't know. If so, I mean, just, if I'm out of town to, on over the, on the fifth. And the, the problem with doing it near another, we have to publish our budget for the hearing on September fifth. Uh, this month. Wait, I'm saying do another meeting this month because yes, right. Well, which is why I'm saying that if Bill's wanting it close to another meeting, that basically mm -hmm. leaves. But Bill can do a telephone. I can fly twice, or I can do it by phone call, yeah. like Jeff does. And we got to find out why time. Jeff could. <laughs> can yeah, can we do because the September fifth meeting, I will not be there. No, no, that's so September. I won't either. So we have to make sure that this thing works. So we can try, you know, try to sample. Run the way we so know it'll work. If I stick my, if I call Jeff and stick my cell phone underneath that mic, then it works. No, they got it. They've got this contraption now. They got to make it work. Yeah. Simple. Okay. So, what's a good date for everybody? Could we do it that last week of August? The twenty. That's gonna be too late because we won't have things published. Okay. So you need it next week. Yeah, next yeah, week. Next week. All right. So need to be next all right. week. Okay. What's good next week? Four o'clock Monday. Five o'clock. First thing in the morning. I don't do mornings. I don't do afternoons at four. Now what? Lunch. I'm just kidding. All right. This room so next week 14? is not available Tuesday or Thursday. Well, Monday's the fourteenth. Right. I, I was just saying. Tuesday afternoon, the 15th, this room's not available. I cannot do it Thursday afternoon because we're meeting with the financial software to go. I thought we talking Monday. Okay. Monday, I am open after 10 o'clock. What's the pleasure of the commission? I'm available. Phil, you're the guy most Yeah, ready. No, I'll make it. I'll make it. Oh, we'll phone get phone this thing working. Do the phone thing. Okay. okay. And Jeff will <laughs> most likely be back, so at <laughs> least there will be three of us. Okay. The 14th at four o'clock, five o'clock. What works best for you, Ken? Your word. Four o'clock. Four o'clock. Yes, August 14th, four, four o'clock. And not only are we going to clear up the cost of living and, and the fairness to the staff, but we're going to clear up the other smaller items that we never return to, such as iguana control, et cetera, et cetera. Well, I think Carolyn wants to talk about taxes too. And right? taxes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I, I okay. Without, did, uh, did Ken just say he's not available? Yeah, I'm not available. And what's wrong with the 15th? Uh, this room is not available in who, the afternoon. Who has this room? Uh, the police department is doing promotion. No, I, mean, I won't have this room. I'll have the room with us. Okay. Oh. okay. Not You're doing the room? Okay, I have it flipped in the queue. Tuesday, Tuesday the, the 15th? 15th? I'm fine with the 15th. Yeah. Okay. Tuesday the 15th, 4 o'clock. Okay, the special budget meeting is adjourned. Thank you.